up until this point, our programs have had a terminal user interface. That just means that it looks like it does in Shell. The user types something in, it's very text-based. It's not what we're used to with having buttons and images to click. In this chapter, we're going to look at how we can design GUI-based programs. GUI is Graphical User Interface. It's basically just these small images that are icons that we can use um, to open folders. They represent objects um, or we can perform certain commands with them. Let's take a look at the differences between a GUI program and a terminal-based program. This first one is terminal-based, and if we run this, the user has to enter gross income, let's say $30,000, and then they enter the number of dependents, let's say two, and they press enter, and they get the income tax. They have to rerun this program if they want to compute different results. So for instance, if they meant to enter three dependents instead of two, they have to rerun this whole program. Now let's look at that same program with a GUI interface. Here we can enter our gross income as we did before and say we want two dependents and we can click this button to compute and it does give us the total here. But then if we wanted to change the dependents to three instead of two, we can easily do that. The, the GUI interface allows the user a little more control. It's also event driven. Think about JavaScript, how things happen on a click. Um, we can select and change these, this text. We can select and change this text. We can compute or recompute based on our changes. To create our GUI interface in this chapter, we're going to use subclasses and inheritance. Don't get too worried if you don't really understand what classes are right now, because we will learn more um, as we move along this chapter and the next chapter. Let's start off by creating a script file called labeldemo.py. Python has some simple tools that are GUI based to allow us to easily modify and create windows. Um, the most commonly used one is called tkinter. It's T-K-I-N-T-E-R. You can find more about this at python.org. But it's a little more difficult than we want to get into right now. So the author has created an open source um, module called Breezy Python GUI. Breezy Python GUI is based off of TKinter. So since we will be import importing this module, um, you will need to make sure that this file exists in the same folder location as labeldemo.py. And again, I do recommend that you don't save these to your Google Drive, save them to your desktop. And then once you complete them and have them working correctly, then you can upload them to your Google Drive. Okay, so from Breezy Python GUI, we're going to import EasyFrame. To create a class, you use the keyword class. And it is convention to capitalize, so not camel case like we were used to in JavaScript, the name of the class. In this case, we are defining a class called label demo, and it will be a subclass of EasyFrame. The label demo class will describe the Windows layout and functionality for our application. In classes, we usually will define methods of those classes. Here we define an init method, and notice these are double underscores, in the label demo class. This method is automatically run when the window is created. The init method runs a method with the same name on the EasyFrame class, and then sets up any window components to display the window. In this case, the add label method is running on the window itself. The add label method creates a window component, a label object with the text hello world, and it sets it in the grid position 00. These last five lines of code define a main function and check to see if the Python code file is being run as a program. If this is true, the main function is called to create an instance of the label demo class. 
The main loop method is then run on this object. At this point, the window pops up for viewing. Note that main loop, as the name implies, enters a loop. The Python virtual machine runs this loop behind the scenes. Its purpose is to wait for a user event, as we mentioned earlier. The loop terminates when the user clicks the Windows close box. Because we'll typically use this, um, you will see this content be repeated um, throughout our instances of creating GUI programs. So let's check it out. And here we have our little window. Hello world! On the right side of our screen, we have the label demo that we just created. And I just opened this in code so that we could compare it with the breezy Python GUI code that I have over here on the left. So we mentioned that we were going to be using subclasses. But here, when we created this label demo, which is the class that we created, we based it off the easy frame class. It is a subclass of the easy frame class. This easy frame class exists in this breezy Python GUI file. So if we go to that file and look at easy class, we see it there. Now they based this class off of the TK enter class for frame. So here, easy frame is a subclass of frame and label demo is a subclass of easy frame. That's important. It allows for, you know, some layers of abstraction, but it also means that we can usually find classes that are already created for us. So as a rule of thumb, when we're thinking about creating a new class of objects, we should kind of look around and see if those objects already sort of exist um, so that we could just use them and kind of modify them with our subclass. Let's also note while we're here again some important formatting. We really need to be including our doc strings for our classes and our methods. Notice that any methods that are associated with your classes are indented. And if we have a method that is part of a class, it always has to have a parameter of self. When we call this function, we do not have to send itself. It does it on its own, but we always need to include self there. And we'll continue to talk about that as we progress.